In part one of this screencast, we looked at an introduction to the Spring Security Core plugin. We installed a quick sample app Grails application. Uh, we looked at running the S2 quick start script, uh, which created some basic user domain, role domain, and user role domain. We looked at some configuration that was created for us and kind of what it meant. And we looked at creating some sample data to get started with. So in part two, we're going to actually take that and implement it in our application. Uh, we want to be able to provide access control to different controllers. So again, I just want to point out this plugin homepage. There's some great documentation here. So if you go in the user guide, there's just a ton of info in here. And this is one of the more configurable plugins I've ever used. So really read through the documentation because you can configure just about everything. So let's jump back in here. So again, we created when we created our, our S2 quick start script, uh, we created a user a role and a user role. One of the first things that people want to do is customize this user domain, which is perfectly normal. So I might want things like a first name, a last name, and maybe an email address. So that's fine. In the case of, oops. Um, there are other ways to do this. You could probably create a an actual user, you know, whether it's a person or employee or user, and and kind of model your your person that way, and then extend that using some type of security user. But again, in this case, we're just keeping it real simple. We're just going to do it right here, which is perfectly fine. Um, so now that we have that, we're going to jump back in our Bootstrap where we created this information and now I'm just going to add a few more properties here so I have first name, last name, and email address so in this case uh, our email address and our user, username is exactly the same uh, don't worry about that too much for now uh, in a future screencast we'll come back and look at that there's actually a way to tell Spring Security what property or field is going to be used as the username so in my case, I don't want to be storing, you know, if, if we're requiring e email addresses for our, our user authentication, you know, I wouldn't want to store that in two different fields. We could just say we have uh, an email address and a password and username property at Spring Security is actually our email address. But again, for this simple exercise, let's just use them both and, and be okay with them both being the same. All right, so now I saved that. Um, and I came over here and I created two quick two quick controllers before this started. I have a public controller and a private controller. So let's look at our public controller. It's really simple here. All we have is an index method. Um, it's going to render some text hello from public index. And again, we have a private controller where we're just going to render some text. So now we have these. Uh, when we fire the Let's actually go ahead and fire this up and I'll kind of talk through this. So, All right, so in our case, we have a public controller, which we want anybody to be able to hit and use. Um, and then maybe we have a private controller where we want to lock down. So in our case, we only have one role right now, but you could envision maybe a scenario where we had an app where everything was public to everyone um, in, in this public controller. Then maybe we had a, a My Account section on our website where we wanted only people with the role user could access. Then maybe we had a back end where we kind of administer data and view reports that um, could only be viewed using the role admin role. So you can kind of see that we're kind of providing access to specific controllers based on the role you have. So now that user that we created before is admin. Um, so just keep that in mind as we're looking at this. So right now, we haven't done anything different. We just have two controllers. And the interesting thing here is when we fire this up um, and we go ahead and try to view either the public or the private controller, it's actually going to redirect us to the login. And the reason for that is, if you remember, let's actually jump back in here look at config so if you remember when we were talking about this before there's this kind of access static rules uh, map down here 
and these are by default the only things that can be viewed um, so it's basically locking everything down and here's our whitelist so it's it's a nice approach because by default we just want to lock everything down and then we kind of permit you to see certain things so now again I said in before I can come in here and add that here but I choose to do it on the class level so I'm gonna actually jump into this controller and again this is in the documentation but an easy way to do this is using the secured AST transformation so if I just write secure so uh, one way that we could do this is uh, we can actually provide a role um, in this case um, I'm just going to provide the permit all and this is kind of the same as setting that up in here so we have the permit all role there um, so all I'm saying here is that any of these actions within this controller can be viewed to, by anybody so let's just jump back to here and we should be able to hit our public controller now so that's great um, again we can do this at a class level so maybe I wanted to permit all you can also do this at like the method level um, which we won't actually do in this one so let's jump over to our private controller so let's create another one too called um, public for whatever reason so what I want to say is um, at a class level again we're going to use our secured actually let's just back this up for now we'll keep this simple so we have our secured here and in this case what we're going to say is we only want people with the um, role of admin to be able to view this private controller oh, we did not import that okay so that should work now. so now uh, what we want to do is we can go back to our app and if we go to private now uh, it's going to kick us over to the authentication page so now the good thing is um, by default it will remember so whatever you are you know whatever controller action whatever type of mapping you hit the Spring Security Core plugin will remember what template you were trying to view when you were kicked over to the auth page. So if we can successfully log in here, we'll be kicked back to that page. Um, and of course, I only have one role, so when I'm kicked back to that page, if, as long as I'm logged in, I should be able to view it. Um, if there was like a different role, then we'll actually ch we'll, we'll do that. So first off, let me just put in some dummy data here. Click that. So you see, it built this form for us. This forms. Uh, customizable and it, we'll look at that in a future screencast as well so I think our username here was the email address and password so now that we're logged in it kicked us over to the private index so now let's um, jump back in here so now we're saying for basically everything in this class we're gonna use role admin so let's say there was a super admin and we run it to let's say secured and we'll go roll super admin so now we have this uh, super admin okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually bring this down at the class level you know you can you can declare this at the class level or the action level uh, since I'm only gonna have two here I'm just I, I'm gonna put them on both the methods just to kind of show that you can do that so now if I jump back over to my app I should be able to still view this um, but now when I view this one it's not going to kick me back to the login page because I'm logged in already right um, so I have some type of authentication so really what it's going to what it should do is throw up a 403 and basically say I don't have access to view that 
So if we look at this still, we refresh, we can still hit that. But now if we go to super admin, sorry you do not have you are not authorized to view this page. And it actually it's a 403 and you can kind of catch that in your app as as you want. So that's just a really quick and dirty way to get going with the roles-based authentication here. And again, I, you know, I've built apps in the past in other languages that that I don't have security frameworks in place for. And you know, you can imagine that building something this sophisticated and tested that that you know works is really just a pain in the butt. So this is great to have install you know we were up and running in what 15 20 minutes here and kind of explained everything so it's a really great uh, plug-in there's so much you can do with it and in the coming screencast I'm gonna go through like some of the configurations that you can change and you know maybe um, how to how to modify that that login page just a bunch of little things that I've come across that I want to share so hope you'll come back for those thank you